Under the hood of AV1 are sort of one of the biggest driving parts of it, of course, is that you're getting a better uh, efficiency out of the codec. Uh, and when we look at what it takes to deliver such a large size piece of video, you really need to have that extra level of efficiency to make that practical for many people. I mean, I think quite a bit of our audience here today, uh, you know, certainly the members of this panel and so forth, uh, as we were talking about before the uh, the panel started, we all have very good internet connections. You know, we're probably going to be on the, uh, the cutting edge of that for what uh, most people in America and around the rest of the world and so forth have. But um, that's not the case for mainstream uh, audiences, I would say. And in order to be able to reach uh, those audiences, you know, over the connections that they have, you're going to have to be able to deliver that that much more efficiently, um, as well as obviously the related costs that come into play with uh, you know, delivery in itself. So CDN uh, usage and so forth, of course, is going to uh, go up considerably when you have such a large size piece of video uh, trying to be pushed through those pipes, which uh, you know, multiplies itself as a cost. If you're delivering uh, a video at one size or a much larger size, that cost gets multiplied out every time you have to uh, go stream that. I think that's one of the reasons why, especially amongst uh, the larger companies, we've seen so much uh, eagerness to adopt uh, AV1, uh, I think, uh, for especially their you know, sort of more popular content that we've seen elsewhere. So, um, I mean, do we expect to see AV1 in 8K TVs? Um, what does it mean in terms of chipsets? What does it mean in terms of terms of power consumption, because I think that's also important. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think especially when we look at um, some of the recent uh, announcements that came out of CES earlier this year, uh, AV1 was really the 8K codec of choice. In fact, I'm not aware of anybody who was uh, stating delivery through any mechanism besides uh, AV1. So I think Samsung probably was the one that made the, uh, the largest headlines around that, that really pushed uh, AV1 as being a uh, sort of marquee feature for their 8K television, although actually every 2020 uh, model set from Samsung has uh, uh, AV1 decoding support. Uh, of course, that's really more about, you know, having the uh, application specific integrated circuits that you would need in order to decode that in sort of a, a lower processing power environment as we tend to see in a smart TV, because uh, they don't necessarily have as need for the beefy CPUs, but they do have needs for those very specific use cases of decoding complex video. Um, Power tends to be, of course, somewhat less of a consideration. You always want to be efficient with power as you can, but if you're plugged into a, you know, a wall outlet, you're not necessarily going to be as concerned about that. I think where we'll see that becoming a much larger concern, where it's really relevant is when we talk about mobile delivery for that. So not necessarily those 8K resolutions, but uh, you know, handsets, of course, are where that's really gonna be making the big difference.